This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. We've got Netflix sign. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. By the time this episode is published, Mm -hmm. 14 new episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000 will be available on Netflix thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. Yes. Mark won't have watched them all. He's going to ration them. Yes. Going to try to avoid the whole binge thing. Mm -hmm. Now, before I get into the new season, I wanted to go over the history of MST3K, and then I realized we had already done so on episode 41. I remember it like it was 2013. Well, it all starts with this guy, Joel Hodgson, who's this stand-up and a writer for Minneapolis. He was this prop comic, and he had these wacky devices. And so he had a few appearances actually on SNL as a, as like a, hmm. they did like, like stand-up bits sometimes in the middle of the show back in the 80s. Do it's, you ever remember seeing I him? I remember seeing him, and you can find his stuff on YouTube once in a while now. Uh, that was 1984. He was, at that point, offered a sitcom deal, but according to interviews, he felt that L.A. was phony. Well, yeah. I personally think that he's allergic to success. Yes. That's (laughs) probably more like it. So he returned to his hometown, and then in 1988, Jim Mallon, who was running this UHF station, KTMA, in Minneapolis, he needed a show to fill up two hours on Sunday nights. And he thought of the idea of maybe a show based on Joel's act... And Joel came up with the concept for MST3K, and they produced 13 episodes. So what's the concept? Mm -hmm. Regular guy Joel works at Gizmonics Institute. There are these two mad scientists who send him into space. Dr. Clayton Forrester, who's Trace Ballou, and Dr. Lawrence Earhart, who's J. Elvis Weinstein. They're basically testing his ability to withstand watching the worst movies ever made. And they put him in space so that he doesn't have anything else to do? Exactly. Okay. And they can control the experiment. And this is also a way for KTMA to use this movie package they bought the rights to. So they had the movies, but they didn't want to just show the movies. Right. So so this was really sort of like doing it instead of a... um, An Elvira type thing. Or a Goulardi. Yeah, Yeah. that type of thing. Okay. So just kind of a variant on that. So Joel builds these robots, a.k.a. puppets, to keep him company while he's up there in space. Crow, played by uh, Trace Ballou. This is Crow. Yeah. Eee. Gypsum, later called Gypsy. She's uh, right here. Voiced by, originally, Weinstein. And Beeper, who was later reformed into Servo, also Weinstein, uh, did. And so they basically make fun of the movie while they were on screen as silhouettes who were seated in these movie seats. Mm -hmm. Uh, They did these bumpers back on what they called the Satellite of Love, the the, the ship he's on, to basically break up the movie a little better. KTMA ended up going up bankrupt soon after it aired these episodes. So, whoop, he's pretty much out of a job. So Joel sends this pitch tape, which is just a collection of stuff he had done, it was uh, the segment from SNL and a few other things he did. Send those out to various outlets. And also on that uh, tape was MST. HBO saw it. And they needed something to fill time on their brand new comedy channel, which later became Comedy Central, when they merged with Ha, another comedy-based channel. <laughs> and they ordered a bunch of episodes in 1989. And is that when you first saw it, when yes. it was on Comedy Central? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I kind of remember seeing some of the KTMA episodes. Well, but... the KTMA stuff, you the only way you see them is through tapes, because uh, they never aired those, those ones nationally. See, I seem to recall seeing something on TV, and I may have actually gotten those stations when I was in college, up in the uh, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Oh, that's a possibility. So, so the show became a cult hit. And, in fact, it was really Comedy Central's first real hit. Until South Park and Daily Show came mm-hmm. on, came, came by, this was their biggest hit. In the second season, Weinstein role, uh, he moved on, and Kevin Murphy took over the role of Tom Servo. TV's Frank, 
Frank Conniff, took over the role of Dr. Forrester's lackey. Mm -hmm. And the two mad scientists, were usually referred to as the Mads, were now down in Deep 13, an underground lair, so they were no longer directly working for the Gizmonics Institute. <laughs> Did they change this theme song then? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, and they reshot the opening, actually, at that point. Because I can sing the one about Gizmonic Institute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and in 1991, a tradition began on Thanksgiving. The Comedy Central did this Turkey Day, which was a 24-hour MST marathon. In fact, it was just recreated this year online for the anniversary. Uh, I've got a link to at least some of the clips from it on our Facebook page. And it was just basically reruns. I mean, there was no new material, was there? Except Joel did new wraparounds for each one. Okay. But it was very basic. There mm -hmm. wasn't too much to that. So, 1993, Joel and Jim Mallon started to fight for control of the show because they had very different creative concepts for the show. Malin wanted to do a movie. Like a theatrical release. A theatrical, theatrical release. Because they already do movies. Right. <laughs> but Joel really wasn't interested. And in fact, he wanted to pull away from being on camera at that point. So Joel ends up leaving the show, and he's replaced by the show's head writer, Mike Nelson, who was playing, his role was an office temp at Deep 13. And after Joel escapes... The Mads are like, what are we going to do? And here's that temp. Yes. <laughs> in 1996, TV's Frank left the show. And at that point, Dr. Forrester's mother, uh, who was played by another writer on the show, Mary Jo Pell, joined the cast. In that same year, Comedy Central canceled the show. Mm -hmm. And in the final episode, Dr. F becomes a star child. <laughs> <laughs> now, was that a concept from one of the movies? Oh, well, was well, it was it was a 2001 parody at oh, the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's this whole, there's a VHS tape of, a huge VHS tape of the worst movie ever made. That's what it says on it. Uh -huh. it it's the obelisk and all this. And <laughs> so, that same year, MST3K, the movie came out. Uh, they used This Island Earth as the movie that they did within the movie. Universal, for whatever reason, decided to make this what's called a rock and roll film. Now, it has nothing to do with music. Okay. It means that you, you they make a very limited number of prints, and then you move it from town to town. <laughs> and, in fact, there were only 26 prints made of the yes. movie. That was the, the widest release was 26. The, the movie bombed. It, all, it made just over $1 million in the theaters. As you would expect from something that has 26 prints and has to move from city to city. Right. We actually flew to Minneapolis to see I it. I didn't. Yeah, you that's right. You did. That's right. With your friend. Yes. I didn't go. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and later, you were nice enough to track down the laser disc for me. Can I yes. get it? Yes. I did get the laser disc. And of course, now, though, it's available everywhere on. Exactly. <laughs> DVD and Blu-ray and whatever. Yeah. So, um, there was a fan-based write-in campaign that got the Sci-Fi Channel, now Sci-Fi or Siffy or whatever they're calling it now. Skiffy. I don't Skiffy. know. Skiffy. I guess there's no C. So, right. Yeah. Uh, and they, they agreed to pick it up, and they ran it for three more seasons between 97 and 99. And, as you would suspect, it was a lot more Sci-Fi-based they, for the first, I think, season and a half, they did nothing but Universal movies that mm -hmm. from Universal International, which were a lot of. There were a lot of schlocky movies from then, from yes. that studio at the time. But it was all stuff that Universal, that also owned Sci-Fi, had the rights to. Writer Bill Corbett took over the crow role. Mrs. Forrester was now the main villain. And yes, <laughs> which she had to be because... Because... Frank was gone. Frank was gone, and, uh, and Dr. F was gone. Was gone. So her henchmen were Professor Bobo, played by Kevin Murphy, a talking gorilla, a reference to Planet of the Apes, mm -hmm. and Observer, played by Bill Corbett, who's omniscient and yet idiotic. Um, and the reason they both hate Mike is because he accidentally blew up their planets. Yes. <laughs> I sort of thought that was a pretty good concept. Yeah, yeah. But... So that ran for three years, three seasons at least. And there were reruns for five years after the show left the air in 99, until 2004 was the last time a rerun was on there. We attended both of the 
ConventureCon Expo Festorama events. They were held in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just MST fans uh, came together. And in fact, the pickup that Sci-Fi did for the show was announced at the second one. And they had a rep from the Sci-Fi channel who probably got the, the greatest uh, applause <laughs> event that he probably ever got in his entire, entire life and would ever get in his entire life yeah. because he's in front of all the fans who had just saved his, their favorite show. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so Joel went on to various projects. At one point, he brought part of the team back together for Cinematic Titanic, which involved live performances and videos with the same movie riffing concept. And he brought back Weinstein and uh, Belou and Conniff and Pell, mm -hmm. who were all brought together for that. Meanwhile, Mike went on to Riff Tracks, doing a similar concept with Murphy and Corbett. Mm -hmm. And the idea is they sell these MP3s that you can match with big movies that would never have been on MST. That was always the thing. They could never get the rights to a big blockbuster movie. Right. And as long as, you know, they're not trying to sell you the movie, they can do whatever they want. Exactly. So with it, audio. So it's the the MP3 has their riffing, and you just match it up with the DVD of the movie. Mm -hmm. And they also sell these uh, rift shorts. Now, the MST episodes are on DVD. They came out first from Rhino, and mm -hmm. now they're coming out from Shout Factory. And Shout actually does a great job, I think. They do these mini documentaries about the movie being rift. I'm collecting mm -hmm. them all as they come out. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> And they come with some nice little extras, too. I mean, you know, these were all extras oh, yeah, the box sets, and right. there were some little um, postcard-type yeah. things. Like mini posters from yeah. the Larry's movies. Um, Mark! Mark! Oh, oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. So, Joel has been trying to bring back the series for years. Mm -hmm. He partnered with Shout Factory, who's been putting out the DVDs of the old show, mm -hmm. to buy back the rights and then began a Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. with a goal of $2 million in order to create three new episodes. Right. But by the time the dust settled, 48,270 backers pledged $5,764,229, which was enough to do 14 episodes, including a Christmas show, I'm backer 1921. Oh, I'm sorry we couldn't <laughs> get you in sooner. <laughs> in addition to $630,000 generated from add-on deals that were outside of Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So the show has a brand new cast with Joel as the exec producer. Now, this was a very controversial thing online because a lot of people are like, oh, why can't you just get the old cast together? And Joel made it very clear in his various interviews and writings that it needed a new, fresh group. He wants the show to go on for a very long time, and I think he's right. Yeah, you, it, it would be like trying to get the cast of Firefly back together now. Yes, but we should really just relax. Yes. Jonah Ray got the jumpsuit as host Jonah Heston, which is, of course, a Planet of the Apes slash Omega Man reference. <laughs> Stand-up comedians Hampton Yount and Baron Vaughn take over as the voices of Crow T. Robot and Tom Servo. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is, unlike on the old show, they're not also the puppeteers. There's an, a separate group of puppeteers, plus they will have like this RC thing that allows them to move the, mo the mouth mm -hmm. So as they're talking. Felicia Day steps in as new mad Kinga Forrester, so Dr. F's daughter, or Pearl's granddaughter. Right. Third generation. Third generation. Pat Oswalt is TV's son of TV's Frank. <laughs> and there are going to be cameos from Pearl Forrester, mm -hmm. Mary Jo Pell, Professor Bobo, Kevin Murphy, and Observer slash Brain Guy, Bill Corbett. There is an all-star writing team, which includes Elliot K uh, Kalen, who is the head writer of The Daily Show, Dan Harmon, who created Community, Neil Scoville, who is a writer on The Simpsons, Paul and Storm, Dana Gould, plus some of the original writing staff, and of course, Joel. So I guess not one person or not one group of people will have to watch all the movies. Right. Yeah, they're, they're kind of switching out, mm -hmm. I guess. And there are many cameos planned with Celebrity Misties. Mm-hmm. Now, as a backer, I just got to see the first episode in advance. Mm -hmm. We just watched it this morning. 
without any spoilers, I can say that if you're worried that the new cast and the budget will ruin things, you should really just relax. It's a cheesy movie. Mm -hmm. There's riffing. There's host segments. There's the door sequence. There's the Mads. Everything's there. Yes. <laughs> so, by all means, because it's available to you now as this is published, go watch it on Netflix, please. Because we want a season 12 and 13 and 14 and 15. That would be nice for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not watching that, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. They tried to kill him with a forklift.